The Frostbite Journals. Journal 76. Waga Risoni Kumo Minashi Unclouded by my ideals. Hosoya Yoshimasa. It doesn't get easier. Death, I mean. It should, but it doesn't. My altars are taking a vacation. They have been for months. I have no idea why. Whenever I go on antipsychotics for long periods of time, this always happens. According to the people around me, I just seem lazy and out of it. Like I'm in a daze. I was told by a nurse that one of my six pills I'm on can cause drowsiness. I'd rather just not be on any medication. But despite what my spirits have told me, I know that if I did that, I'd truly be done for. My mental health has never been something I'm proud of. The song I link to you is a character song for Kunikida Dopu from Bungo Stray Dogs. You don't have to read the novel or enjoy the manga or watch the anime to enjoy the song. It's a bop, as they say. One thing I've really started to notice, despite its craters and bumps, I really do like is my face. My hair is finally starting to grow long enough for emo bangs, yet my dysphoria is starting to kick in. I'm really wanting to chop off all my hair despite it finally growing long enough again. I don't recall if I told you, but I've totally unloaded on Mia. She gave me a stern, I've grown apart from you, that acquitted to don't vent to me like this. Then it ended up with her telling me how, how much despair filled her heart. With my saying, no matter how far apart we've grown, I'll always be there for you. That's the difference. I know. Paraphrasing to the words, almost exact. But I've successfully gotten both her and Jimmy in my life again. I'm nothing, if not a master manipulator. I recently finished a drawing of Kathy. The nose doesn't fit, but I did finish it. This was drawn from my memory. It's pretty accurate to what she looked like when I knew her. I tried to talk to Mia about how I felt. I was receiving silly signs from her, like, supernaturally, and Mia brushed me off. God, she always fucking does that. Doesn't she know how much this means to me? Mia told me Cassie, regarding the supernatural work I was doing for healing her, was she probably wouldn't want you making any more deals for her sake. And I'm like, we're well past that. Quite frankly, she's a vegetable. She doesn't get a say. I just want my friend back. I don't know what about that is so hard to understand. Quite frankly, I was somewhat pissed. This was an opportunity missed. My R, Jubi Phonic version. I still can't help but see it as my fault that Kathy got hit by that car. She did the banishing ritual of her guardian angel because of my altar. She was on her bike late that night coming to meet my altar, prompted by my system. If it weren't for us, she would still be here, to make stupid jokes, to argue about earrings with, to open up her own stupid cafe that I was the only one on Kickstarter to donate to. I miss her. At the time of the incident, the car crash, her getting hit, she was trying to work me out of her life. My alter Roy had major anger issues and had temporarily become the main. He ruined so many friendships of mine, threw out so many of my friends and allies. Morgan, for starters, yeah, Morgan leaving me happened several times. If that was a sin, it would come with a track record. Morgan, eventually Roy went dormant. I don't know how, but I somehow convinced Kathy to stay, even after she deleted my contact on Skype. Two of our altars were almost romantic, her Cheshire and my Roy, but let's not get into all that here. All that matters is I lost Kathy. She's never coming back. I recently did some spirit work that should get her somewhat healed. I did my own work for it. <laughs> Kathy Anderson. She was incredible. Her mom called her a genius. I'm never going to see her again. It's my fault. I'll never get over that. If Abigail hadn't used her as a test for banishing your guardian angel, we wouldn't be here. She would still be here, and we would be friends. Who knows if we'd still be talking.
Dear Kathy Anderson, Compulsive Ink, I remember the night it happened, tears streaming down my face. Our fighting was gone, we were quietly out of place. I don't even know how to live after. I miss your voice, I miss your laughter. Dear Kathy Anderson, I know you'll never hear this song. Even though that's the case, I will sing all night long about how I miss you, and what happened as I feel true. It should have sounded more dramatic in my mind. The crash was silent, it was a softer kind. I know you hated me, and it's not fair that our relationship was healing. We were almost there. Sometimes I think if you hadn't met me that day, if you hadn't left your house, if you weren't on your way, that maybe you would be here to talk to me, that maybe you wouldn't have been hit casually. I guess you really raised the bar. Dear Kathy Anderson, I know you'll never hear this song. Even though that's the case, I will sing all night long about how I miss you. You'd be mad, I guess that's true. When it happened, we were actually talking about our lives and how they were getting better. When it happened, you told me you were finally feeling okay, and now you have no more to say. Your mom said that these sort of things don't just happen. She said it was no accident, some force of some kind of in Saturn. But I think that can only further the pain. There's no thing good from this. There is no gain. Dear Kathy Anderson, I know you'll never hear this song. Even though that's the case, I will sing all night long about how I miss you. You'd be mad at me, I guess, too. I regret everything that I ever said. I'm sorry that I forced you to be my friend. I regret the fighting in each and every case. If you had to leave, why without a trace? For the first three months, I heard the soft crash in my head. It was on repeat over and over and over again. I waited for hours in the hospital, hoping for a sign. And you made it. You made it, but you're completely paralyzed. Slower. Dear Kathy Anderson, I know you won't ever hear this song. I spent many days thinking of what I would say to you. I know if you were aware, we wouldn't be on good terms. Not for long. But for heaven's sake, for all of us, please get up. I guess I just miss her. With my grandparents passing, I've been reflecting on the fragility of life. Some. What is life? How short term it be? What is legacy? What do we leave behind when we're gone and how often is that a travesty? I know in the future I will go missing. The Fae have made it clear they plan to kidnap me, but oh dear, now I'm speaking Looney Ben, aren't I? Unless you're one for my magical endeavors. Fact of the matter is, nobody lives on this earth forever. I've learned this lesson the hard way. I just don't want to wallow in this sorrow anymore. But it's hard not to. I keep recalling flashes of my grandparents' caskets and the smell of their rotting corpses at the burial scene. The awkward seeing outside as we all waited and how clunky the funeral was put together. My father's was much more elegant. It was devastating. I miss them. You always think you're ready for death until it slaps you in the face and then you're not. Because then... Then everything just sort of stops. Dionysius Frost, 8-7-2020